Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. It is Monday today. It's about lunchtime. It's almost 1 p.m. I did my morning routine this morning. I did a bunch of work. I'm having a quick snack, and now I'm getting my nails done. I haven't gotten them done in like almost four weeks, and it shows. It definitely shows. As per usual, it is about two minutes before my appointment, and I am scarfing food in the parking lot. But anyway, here is what my nails are looking like right now. Quite grown out, not the greatest. I'm feeling red at the moment. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Maybe more of like an almond shape and then red. Anyway, I'm just yapping, I need to go inside. So let's get these things freshened up. Can't wait. All right, just finished up my nails. Went with like a little bit more of an almond shape and then red, which is very fun. Very like summery, end of summer vibes to me. I love that. So that was my, kind of my lunch break. So now I'm gonna head home and finish up my work for the day and we will catch up in a little bit. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day and today is such an exciting, unexpected day because this morning, super early in the morning, I was like doing my workout. Drew's down here making his coffee and we were just like standing here talking. We were actually ranting about the Scott Peterson documentary that was on Netflix and then we also watched the one on Peacock. I'll talk more about that later but um, we were just sitting here talking and all of a sudden out of my peripheral I saw like a little cloud of something moving and I was like oh it's probably a bird in the backyard or something like that but then we looked closer and it was a bunny! It was a freaking baby bunny and I am a hundred percent convinced that it's one of Jelly Bean's babies. If you missed the last few vlogs, or like a few vlogs ago, I should say. We had a, I think it's like a, called a desert cottontail bunny, um, make a burrow in our yard and have babies. And we got a wildlife camera and we were trying to catch it, but we couldn't get the wildlife camera to work. And so all we caught was the final night of the bunny basically digging her babies out and then, or baby, we're not sure how many. Um, and we did see two sets of eyes. So we know the baby came out of the burrow and then they took off and went elsewhere, but I'm a hundred percent sure that this is one of those babies just because of like the size of her because that was only like a month two months ago something like that and it's just like it's perfect timing she's here in the yard we're wondering if maybe they went next door because the next door neighbors had their landscapers this morning and then shortly after that she turned up here I'm not sure either way she might have been here this whole time we didn't see Jellybean but Drew actually did see her I think he said it was when I was in Laguna so last week and he did see her in our across the street neighbors front yard so like we know she's around and we know she's alive and it just makes me so happy. So I'm gonna insert some footage that we got of the bunny. I was trying so hard, she was so fast. And every time I got my camera out, she would move. So here's some footage of the baby bunny. It's so cute and exciting. love with her I want her so badly drew literally said he had to leave the room he had to go back upstairs because he said he was experiencing so much cuteness aggression that he was like gonna go out there <laughs> So we left her alone obviously and I'm just so in love with her So Drew was calling her jelly baby because she's jelly beans baby and also like the candy from England So I thought that was really cute. So that's jelly baby. We'll keep an eye out and see if we see her at all um, But yeah, what an amazing surprise We also don't have any updates on like any bird camera stuff because our yard has been solely taken over by doves I didn't know this but doves are like extremely aggressive and territorial And I do remember that from when we lived here before because there was one day where there were babies and I guess Layla was out outside at the same time and they were quite literally attacking Layla like Drew had to go save her because Layla was just like huh? like she had no idea what was going on so yeah that's what's going on in my exciting life backyard <laughs> updates so it's about 11 o'clock now I've just finished doing some work answering some emails planning some stuff and doing my whole morning routine and now I'm gonna do some um, filming I have like a lot of filming to do today I think I'm gonna go out of the house and do a fitting room video I have a couple main channel videos to film obviously want to update you guys and film this vlog and then lots of editing for the rest of the week because we we're actually going out of town on Friday for Labor Day weekend which like I don't think you guys will see this until long after that but yeah 
so that'll be fun that's the update that's what's going on we got a baby bunny we don't really have many bird updates other than the doves have taken over and it's just a random tuesday oh i do have a very fun outfit on today and by outfit i mean i will just be wearing this in my house but this shirt i got from lisa says god probably like last summer or maybe it was the summer before but it has melons and like, sorry, how cute is this? I think I've actually worn this before in a vlog. And then I have my little Amazon dupe necklace from Free People or the Amazon dupe for Free People. I have my cute little gold hoops. These shorts are from Anthropology. I can't really wear them out and about because there's, you know, friction happening in between the thighs, but I can wear them around the house just fine. So yeah, here is my cute little outfit to film in. I'm feeling very cute, very cozy. Oh, and then my glasses are from Glasses USA. I think I always forget where my glasses are from, but if you go to my LTK page, or actually I think even in the description box of this vlog, I always have all of my glasses linked because I get questions about them. So anyway, okay, I am procrastinating as you can tell. So let's go film. All right, the filming is done. That was really fun. And now I am gonna make a snack slash part of my lunch that I have been so curious about for so long. And I'm like super behind on this, but it's like the quote unquote viral cucumber salad. Um, cucumber salad is like not a new thing. It's very prominent in a lot of different cultures, but there is a guy named Logan on TikTok who makes all of these different variations of a cucumber salad and it just makes it look so delicious. Drew and I make cucumber salad all the time when we have like salmon bowls and stuff and we use like all the typical like soy sauce mirin chili oil sesame oil all that kind of stuff but this one is like a little bit different and it has peanut butter and it's like basically like a peanut noodle sauce but on cucumbers and it sounds delicious so we've had this cucumber in our fridge for like over a week now it definitely needs to get eaten in fact i may need to cut off some of it but i thought that we would try oh it is a little soft I think it's gonna be okay, but we're gonna try this little cucumber salad together. So first things first, we gotta chop the tips off of our cuke. Oh, it's fine on the inside. That'll be fine. Okay, so the first step is to very thinly slice your cucumber or use a mandolin or whatever. I will say, if you've never used a mandolin before, please be freaking careful. Like it will literally cut your finger off and I'm not just saying that, I need to this thing it will literally cut your finger off like I have seen so many people do it and they're right no we're not doing that if you don't have a mandolin then just thinly cut your cucumber but here we go then once it gets to a smaller part I'm using the tool because there is no way I am cutting my finger off for a cucumber salad absolutely not there we go beautiful a whole freaking cucumber then you're gonna add all of your good things. So I've seen lots of different variations, but for this one, I'm gonna do like a peanut butter version, like I said. We have barely any peanut butter left, but I am gonna try to scrape all of this out so I can get like a couple tablespoons. I would prefer a more natural peanut butter for this, but it's fine. I feel like Jif peanut butter is for sandwiches, but like natural peanut butter is for like sauces and peanut noodles and stuff like that. You know, that's good enough. And then we used up the rest of our peanut butter. Okay, next up we're gonna add some soy sauce. I don't have a whole lot left. I actually think that'll be fine. You don't wanna add too much. Then we're gonna add some rice wine vinegar. Again, not a lot, but it is like a whole cucumber. Then we're gonna add some sesame seeds. And then we don't have any chili oil, unfortunately at the moment, but we do have this chili onion crunch sprinkle. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that, but not too much because it is quite spicy. And then some sesame oil. Don't wanna use too much of this. I have made that mistake in the past. So then you just add the lid and you shake it up. Based off of what I've seen, I'm gonna be shaking for a while, but we'll see. So here we go. Logan uses MSG in his, but we don't have any. I really wanna get some though, because there are so many recipes that would be so amazing with them. And I feel like we were all told, we were all, we believed this like very prejudiced thing that MSG was like terrible for you when it's like not. We all know where that comes from, right? Anyway, okay. It's looking pretty good. I don't want it to be too peanut buttery. It is looking quite thick. But I also know the more you shake cucumbers, like the more the juices come out. All right. Let's do a taste test. See if it needs anything. See if it needs 
less of something. It smells very peanut buttery. So here's what it's looking like. I feel like it might need more soy sauce. Okay, cheers. <laughs> it's so good. I'm gonna do just a little more soy sauce, a little more chili crunch powder, and a little more sesame oil. Actually, maybe a little more vinegar as well. <laughs> That is so good, just even as like a sauce. Drew and I used to do that all the time. We would just like stir fry some veggies, make some either like rice noodles or ramen noodles, and then toss it up in a sauce like this. It is so freaking good. If you have gochujang, that's really good in it as well. Like there's just unlimited things you can do with it. Let's try this. See, it's like a little more saucy now and a little less like just straight up peanut butter. Okay, cheers. so good that's exactly what i wanted mm, 10 out of 10 definitely recommend trying this we're both eating it right now it's really good but i just realized i forgot garlic but there is garlic in this like oh just kidding so add garlic to yours it's still really good without it but i think we might add some minced garlic really really good ah good morning everyone it is the next day it is about like just shy of 8 a.m i think i'm coming to you makeup free and uh i'll probably regret filming this clip but i'm just sitting outside because this is the first morning since moving here that it feels relatively tolerable to be outdoors and i think that's because it's cloudy this morning um, which like never happens. So I decided to bring the rest of my coffee outside Instead of just like jumping into my workout this morning I decided to just come enjoy some outside time and it's kind of nice out dare I say oh god That's like how I know I've been here for a couple months But when I tell you what the temperature is you're gonna be like that's insane because Arizona is just a different beast, but it is currently 90 degrees outside <laughs> and it's just not that hot comparatively. You know, sometimes it's like 100 degrees before 8 a.m. Um, sometimes it's 100 degrees in the middle of the night. Like when we moved here, we arrived, the movers didn't arrive until 12.30 in the morning. That was like a whole thing. And it was boiling hot, like, like sweltering. We were sweating. They were sweating so much, those poor guys. I was giving them just like water, 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 water. Like, oh my God. Ugh, it's just not for the faint of heart. And we knew that, but you know, other circumstances brought us here. So it's all good. I actually kind of wanted to have a chat about that, but I don't want to hold this camera the whole time. So I'm going to grab my tripod. Okay, there is a... Well, my hose is going off because I'm watering our grass. Um, our sprinklers don't work. They never worked ever since we've lived here. So you have to water the grass. But um, we're doing that. And then there's a bird popping off in the background. And you might hear some traffic. But anyways, I have been really kind of like, I guess the word is struggling with this transition. And um, I guess, you know, it, in the grand scheme of things, it feels silly to even talk about because there are like real life problems out there. Like people are having real life problems and the things that I'm going through are real life problems, but um, the circumstances surrounding this move and moving here have been just such like a whiplash from the start. It was like, we basically had been struggling to find a place to live in Southern California. We'd been looking for like four months and we applied to what, five different places and didn't get them. And that's just so stressful. And we were taking like two hour round trip trips to like other places. And we were just really kind of like struggling with that. Um, and then, you know, we got some news and it was just immediately like we got to pack up everything and go and then like our place in LA, um, like it, things just, it just wasn't good. Like things just started happening. So we were like, okay, we got to go. And then we got here and, you know, have just been trying to like make it work and make the best out of like a not so great situation that is getting better by the way. But, you know, it's obviously not my place to like talk about it. It's just been wild to see so many comments from people. And this is not like 
anything against other people it's just been really interesting seeing comments from people being like you seem like you're glowing since you've been to arizona you seem so much happier oh my god i'm like so happy for you you seem like more like yourself you seem this and that and it's like this has been like two of the worst months of my entire life um it's just been a really really hard transition and we haven't really wanted to be here full disclosure but it's just one of those things where it's like we need to be here at the moment and of course it's like nothing against our friends and family here we love being here with them like our niece was just over this morning before school she comes over mo most mornings before school she comes over on like her half days we picked up our other niece on friday at school and like spent the day with her and you know it's like so so wonderful and things that we weren't able to do every day when we weren't here but it is just like a true testament to like the perception versus the reality of like being online where you know i feel like i have never been worse <laughs> like i am just really struggling in every sense of the word and i think i don't typically like to show that stuff online because number one it's like who wants to log on to youtube.com and hear someone complaining 24 7 and number two it's just like a lot of things are private you know and so it's just it's been a weird a weird couple of months and um i don't want i don't have any regrets in life but this was like a really impulsive decision and we are realizing that it's just different coming back to a place that you've lived the better part of like two and a half years away from and then you come back and it's just not the same it's different and you know a lot of people have been like oh my gosh it must be so magical to be back in your old house and i'm gonna be so honest it's been really weird like it didn't feel like home at first it felt very foreign and very strange and like lots of memories from the pets and stuff and like it just feels totally different we've lived like a whole other life between then when we lived here you know four years ago and now it's been like a weird a weird time so i guess i just wanted to post this to say um I'm really good at faking it till I make it, I suppose, and maybe I should work on being a little more transparent, but like, I don't know how because I think from my years of being online, it has conditioned me to like, not really have too strong of an opinion about anything or like, just be like, but it's fine, it's fine. Cause like, people will have something to say about it, you know? But um, like, yeah, the perception of what you may think, because you only can go by what people show you, right? That people that you follow online. So it's of course you're gonna fill in the blanks otherwise and say like, oh, maybe this or that is going on or like create a narrative in your head. Um, and that's not always true. So, you know, uh, yeah, living in Arizona again is not the worst thing in the entire world. Of course, like, oh my God, we have this beautiful big house. Incredible, like so fortunate but it's just not like, it's not what, where we wanna be at the moment. So it's just kind of tougher than the others. External circumstances, but you just never know what someone's going through. So I honestly take it as like a huge compliment when people are like, oh, you're glowing and whatever, but I am not glowing at all. I am like really struggling and um, maybe I'm just doing a good job at not showing that. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna finish my coffee out here and then we are gonna do a couple little things before i film i'm gonna like prep some stuff and then i'll probably do my workout and then film but yeah just wanted to start off my morning with a little chat a little makeup free <laughs> hair doing god knows what chat and who knows i might cut that entire thing out because I, being on line and being vulnerable these days is like so scary for some reason All right, it is a little while later. I did my workout, did my little shower, had my smoothie, took my vitamins, and now I am just getting ready. I just did a little slick back bun or ponytail. And actually, I saw some, I can't believe I haven't like thought of this before, but I saw someone, I think on Instagram, say that when they do their slick back hairstyles, they put in a scalp oil so that you're doing like a scalp treatment at the same time, you're like slicking your hair back. So I did my little scalp oil. This is the Ceremonia Heritage Scalp Remedy Oil. It smells divine. And then the styling product that I used to slick it with is this Day Cactus Fruit 3-in-1 Styling Cream. This smells amazing as well so my hair is smelling good so now i'm just getting ready for the day we're actually gonna go to gymnastics with our niece later we're gonna go watch her she leveled up which is exciting so we're gonna go see her do some gymnastics and then um probably come back here and like make dinner and stuff but that's a little later i have more computer work to do we actually went to my mom's last night for dinner that was really nice we made taco balls we were watching tv and we were also talking about this freaking i think i mentioned it earlier in this vlog this 
this freaking documentary um, based off of Lacey Peterson and her son's murder by her husband. And there are like all these people apparently in the world who think that he's innocent. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there's two docuseries out right now. One of them is on Netflix. The other one is on Peacock. The first one on Netflix is more about like the case itself, about Lacey's disappearance, about her body being discovered. If you weren't like a millennial and you were, you know, too young for that, it happened in like 2002, I think. I believe I was like a freshman in high school or maybe I was in eighth grade when that happened. And it was just like such a big deal and such a high profile case. And now, 20 years later, the Innocence Project in Los Angeles, which apparently is different from the actual Innocence Project, are taking on Scott Peterson's case and trying to acquit him of his charges, which is absolutely bonkers. That's what the Peacock documentary is about, or the series, and that family? Scott Peterson's family? I'm... I'm... I was aghast watching that. I was I was getting so angry. I was quite literally yelling at my TV like I was shouting. It's just so clear to me that he did it. It's so clear in general that he did it. And this is me just speculating, okay? I'm not like legally stating anything or whatever, but I mean like use your common sense, you know? If you keep up with the case, you know. Anywho, so that's what's been taking up a lot of my brain space. I've been just like talking about it with everyone who's watched it and been like, are we serious about this man? Are we actually serious? I'm using my little Bloom Rudy thing, which I featured in a main channel video. I got this, I think back when I lived here, like last time. So probably 2021, 2022. And it's just like a little tool that creates texture in your hair. And I'm just trying to make some more volume happen with my ponytail here, I'm trying to give it some life. But yeah, I just like couldn't believe the things that I was hearing. <laughs> and seeing when I was watching that docuseries and just how like, especially the sister-in-law, Scott Peterson's sister-in-law became a lawyer, went to law school and became a lawyer to defend this man <sighs> and claims to like love and have cared about Lacey. I mean, it's just, I feel so bad for Lacey's family. They can't rest. They can't just have peace. They can't be left alone without this freaking scumbag of a man just like trying to claim over and over again that he didn't do something that he's been in prison for 20 years for and like listen there are innocent people but he ain't one of them in my opinion that's my opinion i don't really know what i'm doing here i'm just kind of like bumping the ends of my ponytail i feel so happy that my hair is finally growing like my ponytail used to be like up to here and now something's finally happening, which I was getting quite impatient for, I won't lie, but yeah. Sure, that'll do. So yeah, anyway, I just think it's so tragic and every single thing that this man did leading up to and during the time of his wife's disappearance, AKA murder, he has, everything is incriminating. Every single thing is so incriminating and so blatant and clear. It's just like, uh, and I know there's a lot of people who have argued that like there's no evidence and like circumstantial evidence is still evidence. Like it doesn't have to be physical evidence. And also just look at the facts. Look at his behavior. Look at everything he did. Look at the boat permit that he, well the boat that he bought in general, the permit, the telling the mistress. First of all, having an affair on his eight and a half month pregnant wife, telling his mistress that his wife was lost or that he lost her making her believe that she was dead like 10 days before she died. Leaving his eight and a half month pregnant wife on Christmas Eve morning to go drive 90 miles away to use this new boat that he supposedly got because he wanted to go fishing. He spur of the moment decided to go fishing even though he applied for a permit days beforehand. And then also when he got back from this supposed quote unquote fishing trip, he then uh, took a shower, did laundry, cleaned, dumped out a mop bucket, ate pizza, Pizza, and then called her family and said, hey, I don't know where she is. Anyways, if you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely recommend watching the Netflix series at least. And then the Peacock one is interesting if you wanna see like coverage of the people who are in his corner claiming his innocence. Um, but it's just like, it's so wild. So anyway, there's a random tangent on that. I'm gonna head downstairs and get some work done and we'll check in in a bit.